everybody, welcome back to The Scale Nerd. So here we are, finally in the fifth and final video in my five part series on a sculpture I'm doing at 1-6 scale of my brother Bob Pierce during his tour of duty in Vietnam in 1967, at specifically Operation Junction City. So if you've been following, you know that we've been sculpting with Sculpey Firm Clay to do the body and the head and the helmet. And we've used some epoxy sculpt and epoxy clay products, as well as some plastic and other materials to do the fabrication of all of the different gear and the M79 grenade launcher. In the previous videos, you've seen that assemble or that sculpture and that fabrication, as well as some of the painting. This video is going to cover the painting of Bob's body, his head and his helmet, final assembly and completion of the project. So let's go ahead and get started on this video. I think you're gonna enjoy it and seeing the full completed uh, sculpture done and painted and ready to go. Okay, after uh, I go ahead and base coat this out with a very dark green, I'm going to start bringing the uh, tropical green OD uniform to life with uh, some pre-shading with an airbrush. So shooting from the top down, uh, pulling up some highlights and from the bottom up with darker colors to help reinforce shadows. And then taking a, a very dark green and going in and doing the outlining work around all the seams and folds. And now I'm uh, blocking out the color, other colors in the figure. So the brown on the M1957 web harness, uh, kind of a taupe color on the bandana and uh, the belt and, and those things. So uh, this bandana has a camouflage pattern to it. So I'm going in and start uh, blocking in the green and the brown on the uh, bandana and then doing some highlighting and shading with that as well as on the harness. And then we move back to the backpack and other areas on the body to uh, detail that out. When I work on the flesh tones, I always start with a much darker flesh tone, uh, typically a mahogany brown, and then start working up to the highlights by laying uh, several layers over and over again of lighter tones and different hues to work my way to the highest highlights. Uh, again, this is very thin down, watered down paint so that I can just feather in uh, the highlights in a layered process. Now with the most of the painting done, not all of the shading done, I'm going on ahead and adding all of the other elements, the gear that I had painted offline uh, because it was difficult to paint them while they were on, on the figure. Uh, but I don't do all the shading of the main body until I've got those on there because I don't want to have to do a lot of shading and highlighting work in areas that are ultimately going to get covered up by gear. And I want to make sure I capture the proper shadows that are cast from the gear so I need to know where the gear is gonna lie on the body so that I can uh, correctly add highlights and shadows that reflect the gear being on the body. And now here I'm making a very thin down uh, brown layer to start dirtying up the uniform. This is kind of a glazing process. Uh, just keep hitting it over and over, let it dry because as it dries, it becomes almost transparent and visible. So it takes several layers and then moving into the patch. I like to use a fine brush with a stippling technique to try to simulate the texture of the patch to make it look a little bit different than the uniform. Obviously the color's a little bit different, but also the texture. And now we're gonna go ahead and install the M79 grenade launcher 
and the body is basically done and we can move on to the head and the helmet. After getting the basic background color of the uh, cover on the metal pot helmet, go ahead and start doing some initial highlighting and shading. Uh, it helps to guide me through the shading of, of the camouflage. So that's gonna uh, cover all, the entire helmet with this background color. It's kind of an olive drab color. Uh, and then once I get it fully shaded and highlighted I, and I start working on the camouflage, I got kind of some guidance as to where I decided to put my highlights and shades and how I was going to shape the folds. multiple glazes with some greens and some kind of uh, orangish brown colors and even um, a kind of a grayish taupe. This allows me to break up the monotony of a single tone and make it look a little bit more realistic to simulate fading, wear, dirt, and uh, all the different things that weathering does to bring something to life. So I go ahead and do all this before I uh, add the camouflage pattern. And then I'll do it again once the camouflage pattern is complete. Here I'm beginning the first steps of the camouflage pattern with the brown uh, to create the leaf patterns on the on the helmet. And then I move through the two greens. So there's a more of a tropical dark green, and then a little bit more of a uh, gray dark green. After I've got the camouflage patterns all completely done with the brown, the tropical green, and the olive green, then I go ahead and do a little bit of branch work. Um, the research and the photo reference that I've seen for these helmets varied a lot, but they all pretty much included this, these small little twig branch uh, graphics within it. And then I go ahead and start doing all of the fine work around the buttonholes there. Um, and the seams and the frayed areas and the torn areas and, and the wear. This is done with obviously a fine brush and some very, uh, uh, very tedious work to pull out the threads with multiple different colors and then cover it all with clear matte finish. Now I'm moving into the head. You can see I've transferred over to a wet palette. So when I work on a lot of real fine details like that, I like to work from a wet palette because I'm not using much paint and it's hard to keep it from drying in the, in the palette. So the wet palette makes this process a lot easier. So I'm laying down the background off-white for the eyes and then going around and outlining the eyes with a mahogany brown and then taking a chocolate brown to go in and lay the iris work in. You notice that I'm taking the irises off to the left side because I want them kind of looking off on an angle, which is going to push all of the background white to one side of the eye. With a 
main colors of the eye completed, I go ahead and start adding a little bit of detail in the irises. So I'm taking some darker and lighter browns and done some very fine fleck details throughout the iris to try to make them look a little bit more realistic. And ultimately when I get that the way I want it, I'll go in and drop the black pupils in. with the black people's end, the eyes are basically pretty much complete and I can go ahead and uh, add some clear varnish over top of that to give the eyes a wet look. I like to move to the mouth as the next step so uh, working with a very dark red, almost black, I go all the way back into the mouth, and then as it moves, as, as I move towards the front to the lips, get to lighter colors and mahoganies and reds. Um, so don't worry; these colors will get muted down significantly as I as I start blending the flesh tones in, and then I work on the teeth. Just like the eyes, you don't want to use a true white; you want to use an off white, or it looks uh, it doesn't look realistic. So going in and just. Uh, detailing out all the teeth and then bringing in the flesh tones and start blending them over the lips to try to start muting this down and adding some shading and some shape to it. Now you're probably thinking, uh, what in the world is he doing here? But I like to base out the entire head with a dark, darker brown and then start layering in the flesh tones over top of it with a watered down uh, kind of a glaze filtering type process. But uh, as opposed to trying to find the shadows, I start with the shadows and then start working my way up to the highlights. So you can see each layer, once it dries, it becomes almost invisible but they keep compounding on top of one another to allow me to gradually feather out from the shades to the highlights. So eventually I'll get this up to where the majority of the head is one tone, but there'll be some subtle fades from dark to light that you can only do by applying these very, very thin layers of watered down paint. All these brush strokes will eventually start going away because the crosshatch of uh, the brush strokes from the multiple layers just start blending and the eye doesn't pick them up anymore. Normally when I'm doing smaller figures in this at maybe 135th or 124th scale, uh, you're going to do significantly more shading, highlighting, and uh, hue shifts on there to try to simulate um, 3D reality and color. Uh, the larger the scale gets, the less you're going to do that. Otherwise, it just kind of looks like he's wearing makeup. So if you think of a full scale head, you don't have to go in and really paint so many highlights because natural real world lighting creates the highlights and shadows that you need. But as you get to a smaller and smaller scale, uh, light doesn't scale down and shadows and bounce light and ambient light doesn't scale down uh, along with the, the model. So you've kind of got to exaggerate shadows and uh, skin tones and highlights to make it look more believable. So this is a pretty large scale, one six scale, so you're gonna get a lot less of that done with a paintbrush and just let the real world lighting handle it. After I finish all the shading, I'm finding that uh, I've lost a lot of the saturation to the skin, so I'm glazing over top of it with uh, a little bit more of a reddish orange color to try to bring some, um, some warmth back into the skin tone. And uh, I'll do this uh, a couple times and then go back in and begin highlighting and shading again over top of that. And this multiple layer process over and over again is actually what allows you to um, and, and it's kind of an iterative, iterative process, develop the final look that you want. It's almost like sculpting with paint to try to uh, 
massage the colors into creating the shapes and, and effects that you want. It also goes a long ways to uh, blending and feathering uh, whatever brush strokes are left in the paint job. Okay, everyone, there you go. The project's complete. So this one six scale bust is done. All the sculpting, fabrication, and painting is complete. Final assembly done and in the books. So I'm pretty happy with the way the project turned out. Uh, I would say that the, the sculpting of the gear and the body turned out really well. Most of the painting, it, it, it looks good. Uh, where I think I fell short the most was in the, in the likeness of the face. So I think it looks pretty much like my brother. Obviously, this is about 55 years ago, so he looks a lot different today. So trying to capture him at a younger age was quite difficult because I didn't even know him back then. I was just a small child. So uh, with the reference photos I had to work from, it was kind of hard to try to get those uh, exactly what Bob looked like then. Eyes are so difficult to do, just a millimeter off, and you really change the overall appearance because that's how we really recognize people the most. That one facial feature, the eyes, is what's difficult. This is only my second sculpture, so if you followed my other videos, you know that I did a sculpture of Saru, a character from Star Trek Discovery. Uh, recently, it was another one six scale bust, and that was my first attempt at sculpting. This one is being my second. I feel like I'm, I'm growing and doing a little bit better, but I got a lot of room to grow. So I think many years from now, several sculptures from now, I'll do a lot better job on eyes and capturing the likeness in the figures that I sculpt. But at any rate, I think it looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm pretty hopeful that my brother Bob will really like it and enjoy the, the work that I did on it as well. So continue to follow along with me on Facebook and on my YouTube channel. To look for The Scale Nerd on both of those platforms, and you can see a lot of other projects I've done from scale modeling, figures, sculpting, painting, a little bit of everything. Uh, give me a lot of subscribes, follows, and likes, and I'll continue to pump these projects out at you. So until next time, thanks for coming and visiting me. Safe and happy modeling, everybody. Bye now.